Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been working real hard. What are you doing? No, I'm working hard. No, it's the truth. I'm sweating and I'm all dirty and all greasy and grimy right now. Yeah, we got the new Mopar collector's guide. I don't like his marks in the front. Buddy, why don't you buy a real car? Oh! What's that look like? Sunroof motor. Just curious, um, <laughs> I had given you some instructions. Hold it. Hi. It's Preston. It's fine. I'd given you some specific instructions about some research on the 70 Char Challenger sunroof car. Have you got hold of the original owners? No. Have you found any data on it since the last thing, which was a phone number? No. Okay. Why? No reason at all. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay. I don't know what page you were know. on. I Preston's still on no, the phone I'm sure or not. he's still there. There you go. Not he's still there, Preston? I agree. Josh! The unburied dead, the unburied dead are coming back to life. Are coming back to life. My name's Mark Warman. I'm Darren Kirkpatrick. And we get paid to bring dead cars back to life. We work with my best friend, Royal, and my son-in-law, Josh. We search far and wide to find how a car was built, where it spent its life, and how it died. After that, we bring it back to look exactly the way it did on the day it was born. If we don't kill each other. You shut your mouth before I actually punch you out. Can I leave a handprint on your face? I knew last week was one of those freaks of nature that wasn't going to happen very often. Uh, we were riding pretty high. Things went well. We got a lot done. I totally expect the complete opposite out of the Three Stooges this week. 1970 Plymouth Superbird 440 Automatic Alpine White out of South Carolina. 1970 Dodge Challenger RT Factory 440 Magnum 375 horsepower power sunroof. 1970 AAR Cuda 346 barrel four speed lemon twist yellow. I also want to get the Daytona Charger up on the rotisserie and sent off to the Media Blaster. Uh, now that we've got the drivetrain installed in the quadruple black 71 Cuda Phantasm car, I can get back to doing some research and history on the other cars. Josh! When was the last time you did any history on the 71 Charger and I don't see it written down on the file? When? So you haven't done anything, any research at all on that at all. So do you know that Darren didn't do anything on his car either? What are you talking about, dude? <laughs> I was in there talking making about phone the calls. same thing I talked about a few months ago when I said I would like you to That's find out exactly what about. you know. Careful. Don't get upset. What are you so well, worried about? I'm pissed off because I asked you guys to do certain things. And I understand that you're not all that bright. And I understand that you're challenged. And I understand mm -hmm. all those things. But if you can't do something, all I ask you to do is tell me you can't do it. But I did exactly what you instructed me to do, which was call these people who yeah. own this car okay, where prior did you, to you. where did you end it at? Oh, God. With um, the photo. Well, My point exactly. is you haven't picked up and done anything since then. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. Well, hey. Hey, no, no, how about this? Good. God, he's disgruntled. I come up and Darren's sitting in the car on the showroom floor reading a magazine, talking to his buddy instead of doing the research on the cars like I've asked him to do. When I ask him to do something like that, I expect it to get done. I go out to find out if Josh has been doing his job. Absolutely not, he hasn't been doing his job. Why would he be? So I'll tell you what's gonna get their attention. I'm gonna run an ad online right now for a historian and somebody to help me with some of these parts and somebody to help me with some of the public relations. Because it's too much for me to do. They obviously don't care. And if, if it's gonna get done, it's gonna be up to me to hire the person and put them in the position to be able to handle it. That's tough on them. That'll be a cut out of their pay. And I'm happy, happy to cut their pay. Today we have the 69 Charger Daytona on the rotisserie, loaded up on the trailer, and on its way south to Evelyn's Media Blasting in Roseburg. When we get it back, it'll be bare metal and we'll be ready to start replacing panels. My name is Curtis Eveland. I work for Eveland Sandblasting and Painting. We've been in business here in Roseburg, Oregon for 20 years. We do media blasting, sandblasting, 
painting services, just about anything that requires metal work, but we specialize in, in auto body restoration. Mark gave me a call, asked if we could uh, walnut shell the exterior of it, possibly sandblast anything that needs to be done on the floor pans. Uh, we're gonna see what we can do. I think with the walnut blasting, it should remove it just fine. This is the media here, and you can see that there's absolutely no dust to it. It's just a fine granulated walnut shell. We choose to use the walnut shell because it's safe for the environment, it's a renewable resource, and it gets the job done well. It doesn't create any heat on the metal, and that's what most car guys are looking for. This car was built to go through a slalom course. Yesterday, Doug and Derek were working on putting together the new rotisserie system so we could put the CUDA on it. They didn't quite get done, but they're just wrapping up the last things on it now so they can get the CUDA installed on it and we can move it back over to the body shop for actual plastic filler and repair work. Meanwhile, Josh and I are gonna start working on documenting the AAR CUDA that we picked up a while back. A lot of little detail-oriented things that are very unique to the Trans Am Challenger and the AAR CUDA, and it's time that he learned what those are. I'm actually really excited to see the difference between the 1970 AAR 340 six-barrel car and the 1970 383 car. The AAR CUDA and the TA Challenger in 1970, it's mm -hmm. the only time they made them, they only made them for a few months, okay? I want you to be able to tell me how many months they made it for and what those months were. Okay. In 71, you saw these a lot. What is this? Uh, sw a sway bar. It's the rear sway bar. Now, <clears throat> here's one problem I got. See these drums? Yeah. Can you tell by looking at that drum if that's a 10 or an 11 inch it's drum? It's an 11 inch drum because of the fins, okay. the cooling fins. Right. I believe, and you'll research this to be sure if I am correct. Okay. But if you got disc brakes, which was mandatory on all AAR and TA Challengers, which this has, you would have got 10 inch rear drums. Unless for some reason they did run the big 11 inch on the AAR and the TA along with the discs in the front because of the type of car that it is. I want you to count the number of welds. I want you to make a note of the piercing for the four speed, okay? okay. And, and make sure that you hang them. But that's the point of it. This is Mark. Since posting the ad online for the research assistant, I've received a lot of response. However, very, very few of the responses that I got had anything to do with the ad that I placed. One of the things about experience was we were hoping to have that in that arena where we had said, looking for experience. Uh, I would think that if I put an ad out that says research assistant wanted, must have experience, then that person coming in to apply might have, oh, I don't know, I think I have experience. Okay, so Josh, working our way forward on the car, we've got the torque boxes, okay? You're familiar with these, they came on the convertibles. Mm -hmm. They came on the 440 Magnum, 446 pack, 426 Emmy, okay? They also came on the 346 barrel cars. They stiffened the, the unibody up by marrying the frame rails to the floors. That was the point of them, they call them torque boxes. Okay. Okay. The years that when something starts to get bad, it usually gets worse. Sure. On this, right. hang on a minute. Hi, this is Mark. In the case of this, I'm, I'm trying to spend time with Josh, trying to teach him what to be looking for on the AAR. I also want to interview my new applicants, so I'll be right back. Where are you going? Uh, customer, be right back. Listening to these guys drone on for hours about things that have nothing to do with restoring cars is a manager's equivalent of a rectal exam. Waste of flesh. Take care. Waste. Let's get back at it, buddy. All right, sorry. Since the 71 Phantom Cuda is just sitting over there, all stripped of its undercoating and sealers, hanging, waiting for its restoration, I walked Josh over there to show him how exactly the extra pieces were put in from the factory. So right here, this is a great example. This is a 446 barrel car, okay? So it has that leaf spring perch reinforcement. You notice how it's welded on there? Right. Is it spot welded or MIG welded? That's a MIG weld. Yeah. The reason these are MIG welded, as is the torque box, mm -hmm. is they are not assembly line items. Everything that was assembly line, they're all the same. Sheet metal, quarters, floors. Upper deck filler panel, welds. inner and outer, can I talk? 
inner and outer wheelhouses. I can be pretty rapid fire when it comes to nailing these things off because they're second nature to me. Trunk floor, trunk floor extension. Quarter reinforcement. Sometimes he has to slow me down. A D32 was the heavy duty uh, torque flight. D21 was the four speed. I am learning from Mark, and you just have to learn how to adapt to his style of humor and his style of teaching. But he's very knowledgeable, and slowly but surely, I'm learning how to pick up on things. What kind of car would have a six barrel? Uh, the Plymouth would have a six barrel, and the Dodge would have a uh, six pack. Very nice. Yeah. Here's your front heavy duty sway bar, mandatory with the AAR and TA Challengers, just like the rear one was. They wanted this car to handle. This car was built to go through a slalom course, okay? It was driven by guys like Sam Posey, who, by the way, is a friend of mine on Facebook. Don't try that. Hang on, let me write it. P-O-S-E-Y? Probably. We're not that okay. close to friends. It's hard because he talks so fast and it's hard for me to jot everything down. However, I did get a lot of good notes, so I need to get going and get my studying done, and hopefully I can make him happy. After interviewing all the other people that had came in for the job that had no experience, here comes Holly. Hi. Hi. Holly? Yes. Mark Horman? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, you got a minute? We'll sit on top. Wouldn't happen to be an E in that Holly, would it? No. Nope. No E. Go ahead and have a Thank seat. Thank you. You bet. It was so refreshing to have her come in. I knew immediately she knew what she was talking about. She had the experience that was listed in the original ad. I think that's a great idea. I think you're gonna be perfect for the job. Uh, these are all assembly benches. This is one of our assembly benches here. In a situation where you have kind of a newbie to the car hobby, like Holly, it's very important for me to acclimate her with the cars that we're working on and the importance of each car. The history and the heritage, why those are so important, why she has a job, is held in each one of those cars. This is Holly. Holly, that is my son-in-law, Josh. Hi, Holly. He works Hi, on the Josh. show with us. Yes, nice to meet you. Boy, well, I couldn't wait to get his hand in there. Take her easy, guy. Hi, Holly. This is Darren. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice yeah, that's all part too. of the game, too. I came in, met the guys, Josh and Royal, really nice and friendly. I think Holly and I are going to get along really well. Um, she seems very, very, very interested in learning a lot about the muscle cars. I'm going to have to come in before too long and start taking notes from her. Holly seems like a really nice lady, nice personality, great personality. I think she'll fit well. I'm really glad that Mark's got somebody to do that stuff so that I can stay working on the cars. I think Holly will work well with most of the guys. I mean, nobody works well with Darren, and we know that. But I think uh, as far as, like, I don't think Josh is threatened by her. I think Royal's a bit enamored by her. So as far as Darren goes, uh, I, I've tried to prepare her for what I consider to be an onslaught of him. I think he's gonna feel threatened like a caged tiger. He backed into a corner, so he's probably gonna come out aggressive. Threatened by who? Holly. No, I'm not threatened by Holly at all. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, good. How's it going, Darren? Met Darren, he was friendly, um, but it kind of weird later on. Came up and had a magazine and was uh, kind of asking me questions, drilling me about different things. So did you grow up around here? I just felt like he was interrogating me. What high school did you go to? Did you go to college? Where at? Just like question after question after question. Do you know anything about Mopars? So do you have a Mopar? Do you know anything about cars? So how did you get this job anyway? Well, I actually... Yeah. Goo goo ga ga. And then it just kind of went south. I don't really think they needed to hire you, actually just to come out point blank with you. I don't see Holly having a problem getting along with me at all. Have you ever have you ever owned a muscle car? No. Did your boyfriend ever have a muscle car? No. Have you ever rode in a muscle car? No. <laughs> now I'll give you two weeks. If they'd have done their job six months ago, I wouldn't be in this position. I think that I just got in trouble. Because if you don't start doing your job, I will find somebody that will do it. The Daytona is back now, and we've got it inside the shop, up on the correct rotisserie so we can start replacing panels. I'm rounding up the guys so we can get together, figure out exactly what parts need to be replaced, write down the part numbers so I can go in and order them. Okay, so the firewall looked to me like it was fine. Now that the Daytona is stripped, we can really see what all's wrong with it. Um, it's always one of the things that you bite your nails a little when you send something out to get stripped because so much paint, so much epoxy, sealers, primers, Bondo, all kinds of things mask the true condition of the metal. Upper cowl panel, right down the upper cowl panel, 
because I know AMD's making those. Now that we have it back, we realize we have floors, trunk floors, trunk floor extensions, rear valance, a lot of sheet metal pieces that need to be replaced. The good side to that is companies like Auto Metal Direct make everything. Footwell right. You see this? That one's repairable, Mark. Footwell left. Want to leave it? So what I do is I make my own subframe connectors. I weld them to the floor of the car, and that'll give it the rigidity so that we can put it up on the rotisserie and dissect it the rest of the way. We have the subframe connectors put together on the charger. They're all welded into place, so now the body can't move. Uh, I'm gonna move it back over to the body shop so they can start drilling out all the spot welds and removing sheet metal. Mark had taken me out to do some research on the yellow lemon twist AA Arcuda, and we were out there for about two and a half hours doing research. Well, today, Mark really wants me to go in and start doing some, um, some research on all the parts that we went over. Holly's here today, so I'm gonna take it into my own hands to maybe see if Holly can do some research for me. I mean, isn't that why she's here? Hello, Holly. Hey. How are you? Good. What you up to? Just doing an assignment that Mark gave me. Yeah. He also wanted me to have you do some uh, research on the yellow lemon twist 1970 AAR Cuda that we're working on now. It, I'm crazy overwhelmed, like insane. Like, does he want me to get it done today before I leave? Right. Um, so hopefully you can read my penmanship. I didn't consult this with Mark or anybody. I just figured I'd take it upon myself. Maybe she might get more information than I would. I don't know. I guess whenever you get a chance. Thank you so much, Holly. All right. All right, and if you need anything, feel free to let me know. Awesome, Josh. thank you, Holly. Knee deep in codes and trying to figure this out and I have another assignment. Yay, yay, yay. So now that we have the 71 CUDA lowered back down onto its original suspension and put back inside the assembly room, we can get the boxes opened up that showed up yesterday from AMD and start sorting out the parts for the 69 Charger Daytona and the 70 CUDA from Mark and Elena. Mark and I opened up packages today from AMD and it was actually a lot of fun. You know, I was kind of stressing at first that him and I were gonna be at each other's throats, but it was great. See, and this is one of the things that only AMD is doing right now. I noticed <clears throat> the full quarter. This is exactly moose. That's what that's what they called uh, Tom Collins in the stand. M O O N. That spells moose. I don't know how the hell M O O N spells everything that he's been trying to teach me today. I I don't know. I guess I'm gonna have to look it up or something. M O O N. That spells Tom Collins. M O O N spells terminology. It's not a tail. How would you spell tail light? M O O N, Mark. There we go. How would I spell Mark? M O O N. There we go. Don't hit that glass. G L A S S. That spells moon. You watch way too much TV. The quarter TV. skin only comes up to here. The full quarter comes all the way up to the factory splice line. Mm -hmm. So let's set it down over there behind you, back and to your left. JFK, man. Don't you watch anything? No, I don't. I don't watch TV. Perfect. Oh. Charge your rear balance. This is the lower rear Put balance. With the tail light holes in it too. There's tail light holes in it. Mm-hmm. Where? With the tail light holes. Well, where's the tail light holes? I don't see them. Look at you. It says light hole. Oh yeah, it does say light hole. It doesn't say tail light hole. Josh is really learning well, and he's starting to get his lesson is right and how important it is. How very important it is. You can't just guess that it's a tail light. You, you have to know exactly what the part is and say the part correctly. These are backup lights or reverse lights. Tail lights actually are in those other little pieces I was showing him a, a minute a bit ago. <laughs> okay. Oh, there you go, buddy. <laughs> okay. You know, he's he's teaching me, and I just need to learn how to get his sense of humor and put it with, with my own. Peekaboo. Upper deck filler beauty must. Plymouth Barracuda, 70 to 74. Let's go see if it works. Beautiful. Let's set that up. So this lip goes to the inside here. Okay. Like that. Perfect. Flawless. Put that with the CUDA stuff. CUDA. This is a Barracuda left hand trunk floor extension. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's make sure it is a left hand trunk floor extension. Here's the quarter panel up high, comes down all the way. This looks like a left hand. 
left hand. <laughs> now, see these holes? Yeah. A lot of aftermarket ones don't have those holes because it costs a lot of money to make the stamp punch those out. They do it. Otherwise, we'd be doing it. You'd be doing it. So, the, so uh, that's a phenomenal part right there. And the, uh, the body plug kit, now would it yep. come with enough to it would. put in there? Absolutely. Very good body plug kit, phenomenal. You're coming along, actually. I give you a lot of crap for it, but you're coming along. 20 years ago when I started restoring these cars, these parts weren't available, and if they were, they were just not good. AMD, Auto Metal Direct, amazing. They're licensed by Chrysler. Chrysler believes that they will do a good job of replicating the panels so much that they give them the license to do it, and it proves in every single panel that we put on these cars. One of the things I like most about the new AMD sheet metal is that it can buy as little or as much as I need. In the case of our 70 Cuda, most of the interior floors were in perfect shape. It just needed a small section on the driver's side. I had given Holly a specific task, and that was to acclimate herself with the options and codes of our 70 Sunroof Challenger. I, I wanted to give her something kind of fun to do to mix in with it. It's crazy. I'm trying to find these, um, the rear sway bar information on this uh, 1970 AAR. Do what now? So I go in there, I sit down, and I find out that she's doing Josh's homework. This is the assignment that Josh so do you want me to finish uh, up? No. I think that I just got in trouble. I never asked Josh to have you do that. I asked Josh to do that. You know, this is their job. I gave these guys these tasks. Now I find out later that they're, they're pawning them off on the newbie because she doesn't know any better. It's not your fault. I mean, anybody would have fallen for it. If they'd have done their job six months ago, I wouldn't be in this position. I was bringing you this. <laughs> but what you'll find in here and what you'll find on our murder board out there is that we have a huge void. The murder board is a timeline from the date the car was built to the date that we know it died. We know what happened to it after that. We want to find out what happened in that period. Really excited about doing the research on the Phantom Cuda. I think that that sounds a lot more fun. So there's, uh, there's your new homework. I'm not going to let this little bump in the road get me down. I feel like I'm good at what I do. Um, I can get the job done. I can get this, these assignments done. What did we? <clears throat> what did we learn? Don't take any orders from anybody but me. Zing. Okay. Okay. This is absolutely unacceptable. I think it's about time I go out and have a little chat with Josh. Josh. <laughs> Recognize that? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, what? Dude, we're just so freaking overwhelmed with stuff. You with know? what? It, steam steam cleaning a couple of parts? No, just everything in general. Like, I didn't do it to try to get her in trouble or anything. Well, I mean, you did get figured, her in trouble. Well, I just figured, you know, since she's doing the research and stuff, maybe she could help, help me out a little bit. You ask me before you do anything, and you do your job. Because if you don't start doing your job, I will find somebody that will do it, so. Mark and Darren run her off, and Mark will just go crazy on us. Got off to kind of a rough start. You're spilling gas, spilling gas, buddy. I've got off to kind of a rough start. Darren has kind of been a little intimidating or trying to intimidate me. First, it was the I'm not going to last more than two weeks comment. No, I'll give you two weeks. And then I was working and I look up and he's just staring at me.
And then Mark was a little disappointed in me that I uh, took the assignment from Josh. It's not your fault. I mean, anybody would have fallen for it, okay? But that is the law. So a little while ago, I went outside to get my wits about me, and Royal was outside and kind of gave me a little pep talk. Don't take anything, Darren. Darren is <laughs> tough heart. Darren's just kind of, Darren's Darren. I saw Holly outside, she seemed a little distraught. Um, I tried to cheer her up, um, tried to tell her that Darren's game gets easier as time goes by. Yeah, Mark will throw a lot at you and kind of expect you to get it all. You know, I've known Mark since we were kids. The guy's very knowledgeable, very intelligent on, on all the cars and parts, mm -hmm. um, but he'll go over it again later. Um, he spoke really highly of you, so mm -hmm. you made a real impression on your interview, so that's great. Mark needs the research done. Um, he tried to get me to do it, and I just, it's not my thing. I don't, I don't, I would rather be assembling the cars or disassembling the cars, you know, seeing a little production. I'm sure glad you're doing the research and I don't have to do it. <laughs> I mean, I think the research is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, all the history is really cool. I just rather be on the cars. Yeah. <laughs> I like so hang the in there. Thanks. Thanks. See ya. So I think that everything is gonna work out. If Mark and Darren run her off, then um, Mark will just go crazy on us and nobody wants that. Since our 70 Cuda was dipped, every panel has been stripped of its original protection, fillers, and sealers. I replaced that with PPG's DP90 epoxy primer. Once the epoxy primer has set up for a short period of time, we can now top coat it as we see fit. In the case of the CUDA, we are using undercoat on the bottom of the floors. Next, we will jam the inner fender area where the fender goes. After that's done, it's time to put primer on. I use PPG K38 primer. Once we install the five to six coats of K38 primer, we let it set for approximately three to four days, and then we can start sanding on it. Today, Mark wants us to remove the front suspension and the rear end from the 1970 Plymouth AA Arcuda. I think it's gonna go great. Everybody's in a good mood. It's gonna be a great day here at Graveyard Cars. All right, why don't you start taking leaf spring uh, shackle bolts out? The 489, which is the strongest Mopar third member, the strongest case. Did you know these are non-rebuildable, Mark? The 49 case? What's non-rebuildable? 49 case. Oh, it is? Unlike the 741 to 742, which are rebuildable. He doesn't care. If it's not about him, he doesn't care. Yeah. Because I'm a team player. What are you doing? I'm just mere plug. Oh, God, that's so strange. Royals just turned so weird. I know he is. I think he's close to becoming a female. I have the earphones so I can protect my ears for my other job, which is uh, mixing sound for our church. I don't want to ruin my ears like Mark. I guarantee you will never see me wearing funny muffs. <laughs> I won't, that won't fit in there, buddy. Up in there. You stupid I'm a nice person. Quit it. Not going to let you drop, bring me down anymore. I think it was Booker T. Washington who said, I will let no man bring me down so low as to hate him. However, Booker T. Washington never worked with Darren Scott Kirkpatrick, so. Come on, Nancy. Why don't we uh, put those back in? What's that? Shock. Bolts? Yeah. You got that, Alice? Yes, I do. Did your mother and father want a girl child or something? No, why? Just the way you they have, have, I have a sister. I know, but another girl then. Well, you want to see how hard this girl can hit? I want to keep this thing together and intact as much as possible so I can get it steam cleaned as a complete unit, and then I can mark down all of the assembly line markings. I want to document the crap out of this. This is a really original AAR. All right, D. Hang on, just two seconds. Oh, God. Can you hit me that one more time, I'm going to knock you down. <laughs> you think I purposely did that? Uh -oh. Come on, Mary. Come on gas, come on gas, buddy. Oh, no. Rain Man's got to have it poor gas. That's part of the thing. Mm. Yeah. Is it cutting gas in it? Yeah. Um, well, somebody yeah, should have drank. <laughs> just bring it down here and yeah, set it right yeah, here. Quite a bit, dude. There's a quart in there. You want to put that in your Jeep? Yeah, immediately all the transients start thinking that way. Is it impossible, Mark, for you to be nice? I mean, honestly. 
Everybody's all talk, you know. Well, let's do this, let's do that, but nobody wants to nobody wants to help me out. Darren's excuse, let's just cut the, the J bolts for the gas tank, pull it down, because I'm wasting time. Well, the gas tank full, is halfway full, so we could have all just exploded and died. Great ideas here. Great ideas. Well, we're taking this rear end out, because you're not that smart, right there. Go up front and take out the upper control arm bolts and nuts. No. Don't you hit my hand. <laughs> well, set him straight, didn't he? There you go. <laughs> the animal. Nice hair. I'm just taking a few minutes now to put some of the original hardware back in place so I know where it goes, and uh, we'll continue the steam cleaning of the front and rear suspension tomorrow so we can start documenting assembly line markings. Now it's up to us to take the little, just the final few pieces off. So today, I was doing my research on the Sunroof Challenger, and I was waiting to get some information back on it, and so decided to dig around a little bit on the 71 CUDA, and I came across a name. Immediately, I went to the murder board to see if it was there. I think I found something. <laughs> it wasn't, and so I went to tell Mark. I'm positive he was a former owner. His name is I not on that board it. and it's not in this file. Nope. Give him Dan's name, number. Mark's gonna take it over from here. So give me his number because I want to write it on the file. Okay. He seemed really excited. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think I did good. Thank you. Yeah. This lead that Holly's given me could be a major breakthrough on the history of our 71 Phantom Cuda. Hi, is this Dan? Hi, this is Mark Warman with Graveyard Cars. Uh, I learned in the past, if you snooze, you lose. So I wanna get on the phone, get hold of this guy right away, and find out if there's something to this. This could be something very huge. Appreciate it. All right, have a great day. Thank you, bye. Gonna send me a picture. He's got a Polaroid that he had rolled up in the bottom of his toolbox, it's all curled up. Of what I think is the 71 CUDA 446 problem, but that's true. It's one of the biggest pieces of missing time that we have that needs to be filled in. We have nothing from the day the car was made until about 1977. He thinks he bought it in the summer of 1973 and sold it somewhere around the fall of 75. Uh, so, cool. Holly rocks. It was my responsibility to get it done. It was just graduating high school. What's the deal with you guys in Holly? I, it was looking a lot better last I saw it. So today I'm getting ready to take apart the axle on the AR and I was taking pictures. Um, Josh felt kind of bad. He walked up and and I respect the fact that he, it takes a lot to apologize, especially to somebody like me because I usually burn you up over it. Mm. What are you doing? I just want to apologize to you about that whole hallway incident. Um, you know, I, I should have came to you first and, you know, asked you if it would have been all right to use her for this, but um, I'm just super overwhelmed, you know, and. I just got a lot Did you do on. your homework or didn't you? I did. I did. But I just, I wanted to come out here and apologize to you firsthand, you know, just to clear the water. And honestly, it was, it was my responsibility to get it done. And I tried to pawn it off on her and I needed to come out here and tell Mark I'm sorry and try working together as a team to get stuff done because it's already a stressful environment as it is. Okay, I accept your apology, because it does take a lot to humble yourself and apologize. And you were wrong. You shouldn't have gave her that work. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a heavy burden. I know I've thrown you a lot. But you have to remember, I'm doing all this because of you, not because of me. Right. After, after I've shuffled from this mortal coil and, and nobody even remembers my name, somebody's going to have to carry this stuff on. So I am loading you with as much information and knowledge as fast as I can. Um, in, in the end, I hope he understands that my goal is to make him a mini version of me, and it's not just to push him and not just to pick at him. And the reason I'm riding him this hard, I hope he now understands, is to make him the best in this industry like I am. Did you need a hand? Yeah, why don't you, uh, why don't you take the wheels off for me? With Josh, this is the first time that I can remember where he actually stood up, took responsibility for something, knew he was wrong, 
apologized to me, and that's why I openly accepted his apology. Why don't you get the half inch breaker bar um, out of the drawer in there so we can break these things loose? Okay. Well, you know, he talks about me wanting to carry the torch, walk in his footsteps, you know, like, I just, I don't think I can, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I'm cut out to do it. There's just too much stress, you know? I just, I just don't think I can. See, the only thing I haven't been able to make out, because the picture, he was saying that this is all curled up on the ends. Mm -hmm. But that looks like, I mean, I can go in a little further, but it looks to me like that's probably the NHE. What's been really amazing now is uh, Holly's only been here for a week. Uh, I gave her a couple of assignments. Out of the blue, she comes up with a name of somebody who potentially could have owned the 71 Cuda. And he's here. That's him. That's so cool. How you doing? How are you? Dan. Yes. Pleasure to meet you, man. That's so exciting, I can't believe it. Holly's the woman, that's yeah. all I can say. She the woman. Uh, I received a phone call from Holly of Graveyard Cars. Uh, she put me in touch with Mark, who is rebuilding it, I guess, and uh, we've gone on from there. Mark and I exchanged a couple emails. Um, I had an old picture of it watered up in the bottom of my toolbox. Um, I took it out. I uh, took a picture of it, a digital picture of it, and sent it to him on Facebook, and it seems he got a little excited, so. Um, this is Durwood, Hi. Darren, sorry. Durwood. And that's Josh. Hi there. Way nice too tall for his own you. good. Yeah. yeah got turds for eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, originally, I think we were gonna have a phone interview, but uh, this weekend, my wife is here to do a dog agility event, and so I just took the opportunity to come over and play some golf, goof around, and hopefully see a whole bunch of really cool cars. After meeting with Dan, I walked him out back and showed him the 71 Phantom Cuda. This is the first time he saw it in over three decades. So believe it or not, that is our beloved 71 Phantom Cuda. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it looks different. It does look a little different than in the, uh, than in the pictures. I'm not gonna lie to you about that. Gal, huh? I call that a dreamer. Is that wow. insane? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely crazy. Uh, Mark showed me the old Cuda or what's left of it. Uh, it looks a little bit worn. Yeah, it was looking a lot better with last I saw it. <laughs> you want to see something insane? Yeah. Hard to resist, isn't it? I got the uh, the original deck lid off the car. Oh, boy. Did you ever wash that car Go when you ahead. owned it? All the time, yeah. Yeah, well, your hands have been on it. Your DNA has been on it. Um, I used to go make regular trips down Auto Row in Boise in the summer, uh, just looking at cars and dreaming, and uh, saw the Cuda and kind of fell in love with it. So we, we arranged to purchase it. So I bought that car in the summer of 1973. I just graduated from high school. Uh, that was my first big thing to do after, after graduation. I think, I think the total tag on it was $27.95 before my trade. So I had less than, less than 20,000 miles on it. Drove it around for about a year and a half, uh, maybe two, almost two years, but, but had my eyes set on a 69 GTX and eventually uh, sold it to another guy and uh, bought the GTX. Hey Dan, can I ask you a question? Sure. Was this body work done prior to when you got it? Do you know, do you remember having some body work and a, whole, a dent in the door when you got it or anything? No, I don't. Do you remember the front edges of the fender being cut mm -mm. to make room for the tires? Remember that either. When you got the car, what tires and wheels were on it? Uh, the stock rally wheels. Oh, they were. Oh, they were oh, with yeah. the chrome spokes yeah. or the, oh. black, black with chrome spokes. So who put the the appliance on it? That's <laughs> where'd so you it get them? Had magnums on it then. It had magnums. And this is something I would have never been able to know if I hadn't got to Dan. Was what wheels and tires were on it? In 1973, when he bought the car in the summer of 73, it had the Magnum 500 wheel. I would have always assumed that car would have had the 15.7 rally wheel. It was a very popular wheel in the day. It was, a, it was a heavy car. I would have expected that. The problem is all I have is the fender tag and not the broadcast sheet. Wow. 14-inch Magnum. See, with the, with the Chrysler, if you got the broadcast sheet, you know what wheel and tire it had. The fender tag will tell you the motor, the transmission, the rear end. It'll tell you the colors. It'll tell you the seats. But it avoids certain little things like that information. 
So if in 19, summer of 73, it had Magnum 500s on it, I've got a reasonable guess that car started life with Magnum 500s. That is great. So I don't have the nomenclature from Chrysler that would have told me what wheel I had. I could have only assumed it. If you look in our artwork, you'll see the 15.7 Rally because that's what we thought it had. According to Dan, in the summer of 1973, that car was sporting Magnum 500s. My guess is it left the assembly line with those Magnum 500s. Horesco bought it in 77 with no title. Did you have a title when you had the oh, car? Yeah. Sure. So so it was sold it was sold from whoever sold it to him did not have the title. So so once Dan got here and uh, and I showed him the photos that I had, we spent some time on the murder board uh, showing him the gaps that we had filled in and yet the ones that were still out there. We had looked at some of the original photos of it that were taken the day after it was wrecked and the photos shortly after what I believe is when he owned it back in 77. I um, mean it is it is neat to see uh, this this whole history of a car from its birth to its reported death and uh, and have maybe have some sort of a small little little feel for a little part in that somewhere. Oh, he did great. In, in this this puzzle that we're trying to piece together, there's always gonna be missing pieces. There's Holly, Holly, Holly. What's the deal with you guys and Holly? You know, slowly but surely, I think Holly's gonna eventually piece this puzzle together. It's one of the things that makes my job as rewarding as I think it is. I mean, besides being able to bring the cars back to life, which is very important, it's what I'm driven by, to be able to meet the people along the way and, and see the looks in, on their face when they see the cars restored or, or hear the emotion in their voices, they're telling the story because these stories go back 30, 40 years in some cases. And in the case of Dan, he was 17 years old. He was just graduating high school and he's bought his very first car, 1971 Cuda 446 barrel four-speed Hemi Orange with a shaker hood. And that's a pretty cool story. Thanks for the failed week. Once again, you guys came through like clockwork. I knew last week was too good to be true, so sucking at history, I was forced to hire somebody else to do that for us. Thank you very much, Josh and Royal. No, Holly's the one that did all the research. No, I mean from sucking. What? Get the research. Got the Daytona down to the blaster. We did get the Daytona down back, to the blaster. Got a little yeah. few little holes it's got in some it. pinholes in it. Not a little much. bit worse than we thought it was going to be, but that's okay. We need a few panels more than we anticipated. Josh learned a little bit about the AAR. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now he's a little bit more adept, a little more markish on that area. You're welcome. Uh, he, we also got the front and rear suspension out of the AAR too, which is very important, mm -hmm. so that we move it down and have the media blasting done on it. Next. We got the new panels in from AMD, Auto Metal Direct, and they fit great just like a glove. Holly did an awesome job, found us one of the original owners of our 71 Phantom Cuda. Traced it back to find out that the original motor was in it as late as 1975. Thank That's you, Holly. Huge. Thank you, Holly. I knew she'd be good at her job all along. Yeah, I always got that feeling. And the most important thing, I think, of the entire week, if we got anything done in it at all that, that is really great and really solid, it was Dan, it was Holly, and it is filling in a two-year time span on our murder board that was vacant from the time we got the car. And we got a, a lead on a person who actually sold the car. Yeah, we did. We actually got a the, the person, we got the name of the person that Dan sold the car to in 75. He Great. may be the missing link to that 440. Put another tick on the jukebox, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.